morning boys and girls and welcome to circle time today is monday and the month is june and the day of the month is number eight so today is monday june the 8th and the year is 2020 and we're still in the beginning of the month of june and we have a few more weeks of school but june is the month where we have the first day of summer which will happen when we're finished with school. So the weather's starting to get a little bit warmer, the sun is shining, and our vegetables and plants and grass are starting to grow. So um, the world is getting ready for the summer, and so are we as we're getting ready to um, finish up school. So this week, uh, today and all this week, we're gonna be talking about dinosaurs. And I love uh, learning and teaching about dinosaurs because they really were wonderful creatures. And dinosaurs lived a very, very long time ago on the planet Earth, before they were people. And I wanna go over a couple of the words that, that would be on our word wall if we were sitting in class today to help us um, learn a little bit about dinosaurs. And of course, the first word that we're going to learn is the word dinosaurs. And dinosaurs is a word that describes all of the different kinds of dinosaurs because each dinosaur has its own name. And uh, they were very different. Some of them were meat eaters, some of them were plant eaters, and there's all different kinds of dinosaurs, and we'll learn a little, uh, about some of them today. And then the next three words we're going to learn on our word wall are words that we use to describe the size of things. And the first word that we're going to use is the word giant. And giant is a word that we can sometimes use to describe things that are very, very huge or enormous or humongous, things that are very, very big. The next word is the word big. And big also describes things that can be enormous and very huge, but compared to the word giant, giant are things that are, giant is a word to describe things that are much bigger than things that are just big. And then the next word is little. And we can sometimes use words like small or tiny also to describe things um, that are little. So those are the words that we'll be uh, talking about a little bit today along with dinosaur to help us describe the size of things. And what I'm gonna do is we're gonna read a story called Five Huge Dinosaurs. And there's that word, huge. And Five Huge Dinosaurs was written by Thomas More and the pictures were illustrated by Chris Sexton. So Five Huge Dinosaurs. And while I read the story, I want you to look at the faces of the dinosaurs because maybe on Wednesday, we might talk about some emotions and feelings that the dinosaurs were displaying during this story. Five huge dinosaurs wading in a lake. So you can see. To wade means to swim. They jiggle and wiggle and giggle because they pat a cake. Five huge dinosaurs dancing a jig. They rumble and grumble and stumble because they are so big. Five huge dinosaurs singing a song. They hush a by lullaby. Betty by because they play so long. Five huge dinosaurs taking a bow. They squabble and hobble and wobble because they don't know how. Five huge dinosaurs giggle when they wade. Stumble when they dance. hush by when they sing. Wobble when they bow. But one can say on their behalf, the five huge dinosaurs make us laugh. 
the end. Now I wanted to show you a picture on the back of the five dinosaurs that we were just talking about. And I want you to notice that they leave something behind them as they walk across the sand or maybe it's on the grass. Do you know what those are called? Footprints, that's right. Those are footprints for each of the five dinosaurs and they all look very, very different. And, dino and footprints are a way that a scientist called a paleontologist can learn a lot about dinosaurs and what they looked like all those years ago and what they ate and what size they were. And some, and some dinosaurs were even the size of chickens, very, very little and small. And then some were as big as buses, giant and huge. I have some dinosaurs here with me today. And of course, they're only toy dinosaurs. But this is what we think a dinosaur called a bronchiosaurus may have looked like many, many years ago with a very, very long neck. So this dinosaur would have been huge or giant all those years ago. This is another dinosaur. And this dinosaur, I think, is called a stegosaurus. Some of you might even know better than me. And this was also a very big and giant dinosaur. And then the next dinosaur I have here, this is, the size of this dinosaur is very tiny and little and small, but the dinosaur that it is, it's called a T-Rex or a Tyrannosaurus Rex, and they were one of the biggest dinosaurs of all. So when we talk about giant, big, and little, we're really describing the size of things. And the best way to really understand the size of something is to compare it to something else. So I'm gonna do that with you today by using our Duplo blocks. I took some of them home from our classroom today from the basket. So I'm just going to show you the red blocks first. And the red blocks, I've used a whole bunch of blocks and I've made this very, very giant. I've made this huge compared to the blue Duplo blocks, which are kind of big. But in comparison to the red one, they're smaller than, than they are. These are giant. These are big. And these are big because when I take the green Duplo and compare it to the blue ones, this one is very little or small compared to the bigger blue blocks. So I'll see if I can hold all three of them together. And then you can see and compare yourself. So here are the red ones, which are giant the blue, which is big, and then the green, which is little. So we can use um, those words to describe the size of things. So maybe if you go outside today and, um, or over the next couple of days and you go outside and maybe you take a look at a tree and maybe you'll see a giant tree on your sidewalk. Or maybe you'll see um, someone walking their dog and it might be a big dog or it might be a little dog or a small dog. So that's how you can compare the size of different things by using those words. I have a few pictures of some dinosaurs here. First one is the Tyrannosaurus rex, which was one of the biggest dinosaurs that lived. And the next one is a plesiosaur, which was a dinosaur that lived in the water. The next one is an iguanodon. And underneath him is a triceratops. And then this is a skeleton of a dinosaur. And dinosaurs had many, many bones. Here are a few more. This one is the Stegosaurus, which is, I think, the one that I have right here. And then the one after him is the Bronchiosaurus, which is the one with the very long neck. And then it's the Pteranodon, which was a flying dinosaur. And the last one was a Velociraptor, which was the one that we always saw in, the, in Jurassic Park. I don't know if you guys watched that one, it's too scary. But he had lots and lots of teeth. So what I'd like you to do for when we get together on Wednesday, if you have a dinosaur at home, a toy dinosaur or a stuffed dinosaur, you can bring it to class on Wednesday uh, to show us and maybe we'll compare the sizes of all the different dinosaurs uh, that we bring to class on Wednesday. You can also um, color a picture of your favorite dinosaur or maybe you can print one out and show us a picture like I just did if you don't have a dinosaur at home. Or you could just tell me which one is your favorite. But I thought it would be fun if some of us have dinosaurs at home to uh, show them to each other on, cl uh, on class on Wednesday. So the, la the last thing that we're going to do now is if you have this worksheet, it's called Dinosaurs Let's Count. And this worksheet is going to help us learn 
about counting to 10. And we're going to use a 10 frame. And we used a 10 frame in class. Everybody would get their own frame and I would give you the counting cubes. And we would begin to count and learn um, how many it would take to fill up a 10 frame, which we know is 10. So, but this paper is going to show us a number right next to the 10 frame. And the first thing we're going to do is trace that number and then we're going to fill in each little frame to represent the number until we get to the end. And we'll see if it fills up the whole thing. So the first one is the number nine, and I'm going to trace the number nine so it looks like this. Perfect. Then I'm gonna go over to the frame and starting at the top, I'm always gonna do the, the top one first, I'm gonna go all the way to the end, and if I need more, I'm gonna go down to the bottom and continue until I get to nine. So let's do that. You can use a crayon or a marker, whatever you have with you. So the first one, one, two, three, four, five. Then I have to go down to the second row. Six, seven, eight, nine, and then I stop. So your 10 frame should look like this with one box not colored. Now we're gonna move over to the next one, which is number two. So you're gonna trace number two, and how many frames are we gonna color in? Two, that's it. And we're gonna start up at the top. One, two, and then we're gonna stop. And it should look like this. Very good. Then we're gonna to go to the number under nine, which is seven. So I want you to trace the number seven, go over to the 10 frame and color in seven frames. One, two, three, four, five, go down to the bottom, six, seven, and stop. And your 10 frame should look like this. So if I know there are 10 frames inside here, I'm only going to color seven. So I'm gonna have some left over. How many do I have left over? Well, let's see. One, two, three. So that tells me that seven plus three more equals 10. Very good. Let's move over to the number eight. And today is the eighth day of June. So let's trace the number eight and then color in the frames. One, two, three, four, five, go down to the bottom, six, seven, eight, and stop. So your eight frame, or 10 frame, should look like this. I colored eight. How many are left over? Two, very good. Let's move to the next one, number six. Trace the number six, follow those dotted lines, very good. And let's begin at the top. One, two, three, four, five. Now I have to move down and do one more box, six, and stop. So your 10 frame should look like this, the number six. You colored five across the top and one down at the bottom. And how many do you have left over? Four, because six plus four more equals 10. Very good. Let's move to the next one, number three. Trace the number three and color in the frames. One, two, three, and stop. And it should look like this. There's a lot left over. I only colored three. So to fill up that whole 10 frame, I would have to color seven more. Very good. Let's move down to the next one, which is number five. Let's trace the number five and start up at the top. One, two, three, four, five. And then I stop. So this one looks like this. You colored all five boxes up on the top and you left five boxes uncolored because five plus five more equals 10. Now we have one more left and it's the number one. So trace the number one and how many frames are you gonna color? Just one. And it should look like this. So there are a lot left over because I only colored one. We left nine boxes uncolored because nine plus one equals 10. Good job today. So you can also color the little dinosaur up at the top if you'd like, and even a little around the boxes if you want to. That's entirely up to you. So you did a great job today. It was a lot of fun. And I know um, you printed out your worksheets, so you have a little bit of work to do tomorrow, which is Tuesday. And then we'll get back together again on Wednesday. And on Wednesday, um, if you can bring a dinosaur or color a picture of a dinosaur, whatever you'd like to do, we can uh, share that on Wednesday. And then we're gonna go back over the book and we're gonna talk about some of the expressions on the faces of the dinosaurs inside our story.
and we will talk a little bit about emotions and feelings. So I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. I had a lot of fun and I look forward to seeing everyone on Wednesday. If you want to send me a picture of you holding your 10 frame, I would love to see it, your work, or some of the work you do tomorrow. So enjoy the rest of your day. Go outside and see if you see any giant or huge or big or little dogs or trees or cars or anything that's out and about in your town. All right, so I'll see you on Wednesday. Have a great day. Bye.